Good evening, everyone. This is Jonathan J. Dog Letterman, and you're tuned in to the Anything Bucket on WRPBI TV. Tonight in our studio, we have a very special guest. She's going to help us to look good, feel good, and do good, and help with career choices. Representing the Hair Design Institute, please welcome Linda Miller. Linda, welcome to the Anything Bucket. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. And I was really excited uh, to learn about uh, who you are and what you did. And we were talking uh, before the, the show how the concept of the Hair Design Institute uh, came about. And if you could just share with the uh, viewers a little bit of the history sure. of the Hair Design Institute. Sure. The, um, the school actually started, or the first school started in 1999, April 1st, 1999. It's owned by two gentlemen who are both hairstylists. And um, they bought their first school. And um, about a year later, they opened their second school in New York. And, uh, and then in 2008, they opened the next school in uh, also New York in the Brooklyn area. And then in 2010 is when they bought the Florida schools, our school, which is located here in um, Boynton Beach. And then we have also a school in the Popka, Orlando area. Excellent. And you were saying Brooklyn. I kept thinking of uh, the welcome back Carter. It's like, <laughs> yo, I need my hair done. Where do I go? <laughs> and, and my viewers, you all know by looking at me, uh, I need a lot of work with what little hair I do have up there. I joke around and said, yeah, I can be the hair club for men president. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to avail themselves of your services, do you have students that while they're working on their clinical hours Absolutely. can... Uh, work on uh, the general public. Sure, absolutely. That's one of the great things about the cosmetology school and cosmetology industry. It's a hands-on industry. So we have to have clients that come into the salon floor. So we have an open salon floor area so the students can actually work on clients while they're They have to do a certain amount of hours according to each state, a certain amount of hours of practice on mannequins, but then at that point they're allowed to have guests from, from outside come in and get their hair done. And do you offer other uh, classes outside of uh, just the hair care? Do you offer sure. like cosmetology, massage uh, therapy, or anything of those modalities? Sure. Cosmetology actually covers everything or almost everything but um, massage. So in the world of cosmetology, there's skin care, nail care, and hair care. So if you come to school as a full cosmetologist, you have so many hours in each one of those areas. Now, massage therapy is a separate licensure, and a lot of cosmetology schools have that. We've applied for that, so we're hoping by the end of this year, we'll offer that as a separate course. And that sounds great. I, I also know uh, that when you're trained as a cosmetologist, basically you can go anywhere. Uh, there are some requirements. I know there's reciprocity. You were telling me something about your background that I was very uh, intrigued by because you are uh, the equivalent of an auditor for the NACA. Right. And if you can tell us a little bit about that and uh, how that also helps your students. Sure, absolutely. So I'm actually an academic as well as a now school owner, administrator, evaluator for NACUS. And NACUS is the National Accrediting Commission of Career Arts and Sciences. So I travel. I don't go out as much as I used to now with the busy school, but um, I travel about once a quarter and I go evaluate other schools to make them ready for their accreditation. So it does help because I get to bring that back home to our school. And I know you have something unique. You were saying that uh, because of uh, your knowledge, mm -hmm. you're able to share with the student if they come in and they say, Linda, I live in Florida, but you know what? I'm tired of this, this Southeast mentality down here. It's crazy. I want to go live in Montana. Sure. And you then are able to pull up and show the student what they need to do to get certified in Montana. So if you can explain a little bit about how that would work. Sure. Um, actually, we just had a young lady that that happened with. She was going to school about probably three quarters of the way through school. She decided she wanted to go to New York. And New York was the place to go to be a hairstylist. So that's exactly what we did. We looked up all the information of what it would take for her to transfer her license to New York. So she did a 1,200-hour program, which is required for Florida. And then 1,000 hours is required in New York. And we connected her so she could go there and get her license. She's there now, actually. Fantastic. And that leads me to a perfect segue into success stories because a lot of times people, they get uh, into school, they have all these expectations, 
and then for whatever reason their expectations aren't met or they didn't have realistic goals mm -hmm. or realist so if you could tell us about some of the success stories of how those expectations were were met and how the goals that somebody set were achieved sure um i started in this industry back in 19 oh my goodness 1977 i graduated and over the years i have seen um, many stylists who even myself when when i first went to school i had a girlfriend that talked to me into going to school i didn't know what i wanted to do and her grandmother bought her a salon when she graduated out of out of high school and she said listen if you go to beauty school you can come and go to work for me my salon's on the beach it just seemed like the perfect thing it's to do. a the i know the trend in the industry has been for people coming out of school to go and basically rent a chair mm -hmm. or rent a station mm -hmm. uh, and build a client base and what's really nice about that i think it's a way that people can build their own economy because now they're not beholden to quote unquote a boss or that job just over broke. Now they have a talent. Uh, and again, if you can share with us uh, some experiences that you may have had uh, with that, being able to move from salon to salon, state to state, or even internationally. Sure, sure. Um, well, I started in the Tampa Bay area as a young stylist, and then as um, I grew and I learned the business more. I opened my first salon and then uh, after several years, probably about um, eight years of owning my own salon, I met someone who was a regional supervisor for a larger company and that was my new next goal. So I reached that before the age of 30, which was awesome. And then I traveled and I got to see a lot then. My first regional or my first uh, supervisor's trip was to Barcelona, Spain. So I would have never, I would have never thought that I'd ever be in an industry where I could go travel all over the world. And so I've seen a lot. I've been able to travel a lot. Um, and you know, they they think those only belong to degree type people. And the cosmetology industry has a lot to offer. Well, there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of people have the misnomer of, oh, they're just cutting hair. Mm. They don't know what goes into becoming a stylist. Oh, she's just working on somebody's nails. They don't know what that person needs to know uh, and the knowledge that that person has to have. You know, same thing with skin care. Everybody's skin is so different. Mm. So you have to be very knowledgeable, very well versed in the different product lines. Sure. So again, it's educated people uh, out there. Uh, as we wrap up and uh, we uh, break down some of the misnomers about the industry. If you could tell people uh, how they can contact you. Absolutely. We are located in Boynton Beach. We're right on the corner of Federal and Woolbright. Um, our physical address is 552 East Woolbright Road and that's in Boynton Beach in the Sunshine Plaza. And uh, we have the location. What's the uh, phone number and do you have a website? Absolutely. The telephone number is 561-733-2223 and our website is www.hairdesigninstitute.edu and in closing would you like to give the uh, audience a positive message for the evening i i guess i the best thing i could tell anyone is to is to do your passion if your passion is in, um, in hairstyling uh, or any form of the cosmetology industry, if that's something that you really find is a passion, do your passion because it's a wonderful, fun industry. And we want to find, we want to thank Linda Miller from the Hair Design Institute for being here on Anything Bucket. We'll be back with a few more guests to help you to stay positive.